an eighth of a kilometer is she is very selective what do i mean by that i mean the grey boundaries clearly show um they're really high like diabolically high but you need to understand that people understand how to play this game they get it like they know how to get high marks in chem because it's literally repetition let's be so honest right now it's really not that hard either the content stays the same the questions are the same every year of course the grammar grey boundaries are going to be high but it's like how long am i meant to secure that a or an a star you know i've got uni offer i've got my own parents to make proud i've got my myself to make proud you know you might have a certain um grade in mind and you really want to achieve it because i mean look it's a showcase of all your hard work for the past two years but it's like how do i secure it so that's where i come in i will help you i got an a star and everything um and these are the sort of things that i was you know doing and asking myself but we'll get into that in a moment uh as i said got any star three stars whatever tutoring is there if you need it but let's begin which position are you in okay are you track one where well, you know the content but the marks you do get are like hit or miss like some days you get those marks some days you don't it's like very it just fluctuates and you're constantly losing silly mistakes and finding questions hard but here's the thing are you just saying the silly mistakes to make you feel, make yourself feel better or are they actually silly and that's some deep reflection you must do within yourself but um if you're on that track then first point of call this video right here d20 star i tell you everything everything you need to do from to increase it from a really low grade and then from that point on you watch this one as well um the reason why my videos are long is because i do yap quite a bit but my yapping is to make it more like make it make more sense in your head so you have a full picture of what i'm trying to say rather than just saying a sentence and leaving up to interpretation you already know this this that's not how i work um yeah and so note in those videos i tell you the exact resources that i use to get the exam questions in the first place can i just be so honest i never use pmt ever like ever um for chem i only used it for the to get the past papers so it's like oh she's not using pmt what did she use well look at the videos ah <laughs> um right second tract your grade is between a high b to an a star silly mistakes are holding you back um and it's actually silly like genuinely like it's not that oh i didn't get to question because i didn't know the content no, no no they are silly and you're like so frustrated and you just want to like smash the screen moving on uh, and the grey boundaries are giving you such immense grief what do you mean over 90 percent is an a star on paper two they're doing too much guys they're doing too much so if you're that in that position track to continue watching but remember after you watch this watch this one as well now into the checklist this one's i'll be very honest it's extremely niche but it's a niche things that add up the marks um you know get your marks up other than the main stuff but if you're trying to secure that a1a star that's why i have two tracks for a reason because i'm talking to these people here you need the niche not sorry niche marks to get up there um to, to the, those grades so let's begin and let's just try and um, talk through a bit number one can you confidently get the right equations by analyzing the orders without any hiccups what do i mean by that well if you have three tables Oh, that's not a really good pen colour, is it? Okay. If you have... Not three tables, sorry. If you have a table and then you have, like, um, three columns, right? And then you have to rate uh, values there. You have three of them, right? Three um, ions or whatever. And you have to compare them. Well, there's a bit of a different technique to that compared to if it was just two columns, two ions and then we have the rate right thing here you know that there's a very very subtle dis, uh, subtle difference but some people get really stumped when this comes up and it's typically like the first written question in the paper so make sure you you can do that right remember as i said this is a checklist you prove it to yourself that you can do this and then move on um if, and if i told you to draw out the organic synthesis map from memory can you you should be able to um <clears throat> for example if a friend was like to you oh so and so what is like how do you go from i don't know an acyl chloride to an amide you should be able to tell me instantly no hiccups no nothing just strict facts 
but loads of people have been asking me like oh how did you learn the map whatever 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 literally um you can do it on a whiteboard i use this platform for my own revision and a levels as well so i would just upload the document or just put it on good notes just whatever you want or oh, anki anki is a good one i've recently been dis discovered it because of dental school um but yeah you can bring up the organic map and then put like uh, little boxes over the reagents and um, catalysts and stuff and then just kind of like take them away once you get it it's just constantly it's just repetition like that's really it or me and my friends would just test each other like every single day as if it was like a starter to our day you know like an appetizer how sad um next one <laughs> and do you know what it means if excess of something is or excess reagent is added to the organic synthesis map type questions I'm not going to tell you that answer. Once you figure out, you write in the comment section. Okay? If you know, you know. If you don't know, get to know. And I, I really want this checklist to be something that you go out, go away, spend hours on. You know, I really want you to take chemistry in your own hands. And these questions allow you to do that. Um, next one. Do you truly understand what lone pairs and curly arrows do? Can you define them and do you know what they mean if they go in certain directions? And this is a very, very niche one. But do you know what a curly arrow from bond to bond does? Once you figure that out, write it down in the comment section, okay? Um, I actually learnt this because of uh, doing the chemistry Olympiad. But it turns out the questions on ozonolysis. Um, yeah, if, you, if you've seen it, you've seen it. But they do lots of bond to bond curly arrow stuff so you need to know what that means it's very different from going bond like middle of the bond to the um, atom is a difference next one do you know what a curly arrow going towards an atom or away does next one bring up any unfamiliar organic mechanism question and can you talk through the whole logic what i mean by that is why have they moved the curly arrow from this to this position why is it the lone pairs are there why is it the lone pairs are going, I don't know, going somewhere else? Why is it that this random ion over here is being attracted? Like, do you get what I mean? I need you to explain the whole thing. <clears throat> Next one. Can you get 100% on acid bases and buffer calculations? If you sort this out, oh my days. You're actually going to be like flying through. Especially buffer calculations. And if you don't know how to do it, there's tons of videos online. Mike and Guy, I will back this guy to the day I die. He is, he, he's just, ah, oh, without him, I don't know what I would have done. Any of those, I actually don't know. Make sure you get 100% on them. Sort that out, okay? This and sort out redox titrations too. And KCKP and rate equations. And we see all calculations at this point. <laughs> um, and is your KP and KC calculation technique tip top? Do you have a certain method? Like I did ice. Um method and whatever make sure you do them properly okay the next one can you speed run all the colors for transition elements even when the charges change so like fe2 plus to fe3 plus that sort of stuff you need to know the colors i'm telling you now it is so difficult to do it without the colors some questions might be even impossible because there's no way you can derive it so make sure you do know them and you might be thinking oh my god by exam tech, how do i know it how do i learn the colors just make a song. Um, me and my friend really, <laughs> we really liked um, like My Little Pony or like Tracy Beaker's theme songs. And so we used that as the base and we like learned our transition element colours from it. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, yeah, you have to do what you have to do. And that was what we did and it worked. So yeah, just make them interactive. Don't just learn it verbatim. Learn it through a song or a rhyme or something. Or even do like memory palaces or like pretend you're explaining some law to a friend. And like, imagine each colour, each element is characters in the story. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Go crazy. Um, next one. Do you know what really is entailed in stereoisomerism? I remember I asked one of my students, oh, what's stereoisomerism? And they were like, um, I don't really know. I was like, what? That's an umbrella term. It's not even, it's not even the actual thing. So stereoisomerism comes, well, under that comes EZ, cis-trans, and then optical. You need to know that. Paper 2 is flooded. And I say flooded. Okay, the organic paper. 
with zero isomerism so make sure you, that's like on lock um and then can you do all the different versions of zero isomerism um in their 3d shapes that's always coming up in the exams and the next one are you 100 percent sure on the units for each thing so that could be the units for mol no not mol sorry mr that could be the units for entropy that could be the units for kpkc um that could be the units for or um and that we change you need to know the units and by the way a little trick if you're ever stuck on a calculation i say this for both chem and bio if you're stuck on a calculation immediately what you need to do is go towards the end of the question look at what units they put on the line where you have to put your answer and that should guide you of what you need to do next okay um are you sure on your method for balancing uh half equations in both acidic and alkaline conditions do you even know how to do it like, are, like how are you doing it and also do you know that charges on both sides need to be the same for that equation to be correct you might have balanced it correctly but if the charges aren't the same overall on both sides then it's wrong I remember that um and then last one do you for sure know how let's pretend that says no how stere um, stoichiometry works in redox titrations. The thing is, people some people don't know that if, for example, let's say you have two equations, right? Two equations. So this is equation A, this is B. In equation B, this is I minus here. And let's say this has a 5 in front of it. And in equation A, okay, this is a reactant. Now, in the products of equation A, there's iodine. But the thing is, there is no 5 in front of it. So if you have the moles for this and you want the moles for that, what are you going to do? Are you going to divide by 5 or not? That was enough time for you to think. No, you do not divide by 5. You literally transfer the moles that you have for this and you say that is the same for that. And I know it's a bit odd, isn't it? Because there is no 5 there. But that's how stoichiometry works across equations for the same element or atom or ion or whatever. And then let's say hypothetically there was an element or ion here and that was like, what, 2Cr2+. plus. Now, remember, the mold of 5i minus is the same as the mold of i minus. Now, if I want the mold of 2Cr2 plus, what do I do? You times by 2, okay? This, this stoichiometry thing of it being the same only works if it's the same element, atom, ion, whatever. Okay, remember that. That If you clock this, okay, you're like, and you'll be, you've been getting redox titrations wrong, it's most likely because your stoichiometry has been wrong this whole time and you didn't know. So yeah. Anyways, that was very niche, wasn't it? And there are many other things that I could have said, but I could start off with this, okay? And then, yeah, that should hopefully help you uh, increase those subtle marks and then get you to the, the you know, the grades because the grade range is a bit horrific. But yeah, hope that was useful and let me know how it goes.